They're called Confucius Classrooms. American schools are using a curriculum designed and funded by China's Communist Party to indoctrinate students into believing that China is not a tyranny. Well, from high school to kindergarten, these courses are taught in more than 500 public schools across the country. Experts warn that America's youth are being brainwashed with Chinese propaganda. Dale Hurd reports. China is believed to have spent at least $17 million establishing Confucius classrooms in 143 school districts across the U.S., teaching school children Beijing's view of the world. Confucius classrooms are the public school version of Confucius Institutes, Chinese government-financed cultural programs that operate on college campuses, like this one at George Mason University. But while Congress has cracked down on Confucius Institutes by targeting their funding, experts told the House Committee on Education and the Workforce that Confucius classrooms are operating with little or no oversight. This is a, an issue of national security. When you look at the indoctrination going on in our classrooms from several different perspectives, this is one of the most heinous. What they want to do is influence our children into believing that, no, it's a good system and China is a normal country that is not tyrannical. Confucius classrooms are presented to school districts as cultural exchange programs and the chance to learn the Mandarin language. But they're a project of the Chinese Communist government and they teach young people the Chinese Communist Party view of politics and history. So they will not talk about sensitive issues such as what happened in Tiananmen Square in 1989. They will not talk about Taiwan. And, or, or when they talk about Taiwan, they will use the official version to say Taiwan is a province of China. You know, it always and always will be. And China is offering schools big money. Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology in Fairfax County, Virginia, has reportedly disclosed that it's received at least a million dollars in donations through the Confucius Classroom Program. Nicole Neely, president of Parents Defending Education, also warns Confucius Classrooms are operating near 20 military bases, influencing the children of American military personnel. To your question about the military bases, we don't know what is happening, and that to me is the most frightening part. Who are these employees? What do they have access to? And what is going back and forth, both going into the minds of our children and then what data is flowing out of these? That's a concern because Confucius classrooms also give the Chinese government access to data about the schools and the students. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Uh, it's an alarming report. I have found a great deal within Chinese culture, though, to the Chinese culture, Chinese history, um, that is remarkably illuminating. Is the current government there yet another, another dynasty that's doomed to fail? In my opinion, they are. I keep telling everyone China has not yet had its revolution. There was a glimmer of hope 100 years ago. Uh, there was a, a talk of democracy following the uh, American Revolution and saying we can have government by the people, for the people, of the people, that we could have these things. Uh, they haven't achieved it yet. And let me under, underline yet. The Chinese people are wonderful people. They have a deep culture, a lot of riches there. And uh, I'm just waiting for them to finally enter into what they should be having, which is freedom of speech, freedom of religion, all the freedoms that you and I enjoy. In other news, just five days to go, the clock is ticking on the September 30th deadline for a budget agreement. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. With Congress back in session Tuesday, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is trying to put together a short-term measure to keep the government open. Republican holdouts are calling for more spending cuts, increased border security, and less funding for Ukraine. Even if a bill gets through the House, the Senate still has to approve it. A new ABC News Washington Post poll shows more Americans blame President Biden and the Democrats for the crisis. Well, right here in Washington over the weekend, a nationwide organization supporting women in ministry honored CBN's own Terry Mewson. The group She Leads America named Terry among its Christian women 
of distinction at its 2023 gala held at the Museum of the Bible, highlighting her role as 700 Club co-host and her leadership in protecting children worldwide through the ministry she founded, CBN's Orphan's Promise. In a recorded message, Terry encouraged those in attendance to keep up the good fight. Let's commit to pray without ceasing. Our country's at a crossroads and prayer really does change things. I believe there's a wave of fresh vision and fresh anointing coming. So let's let him fill up our cups and then lift our lanterns high, my sisters, because the best is yet to come. Other honorees included Oklahoma pastor Sharon Doherty and Dove Award winning singer Jackie Velasquez. And congratulations to Terry. Gordon? Well, congratulations to, to, to Terry. We already knew that she was a woman of distinction. My nickname for her here is Earth Mother to the World. Uh, she wants to take on the whole world and every single child to make sure everyone has all the wonderful things that God wants them to have. You know, go ye. Congratulations, <laughs> go Terry. Ye. Thank you, Gordon, so uh, much. Their timeshare, cars, clothes, eating out, and household items. Ron and his wife, Stephanie, pulled out the plastic to pay for them all. And when they max out one credit card, they just moved on to the next. Then one day, Ron totaled up the damage. He and Stephanie were $145,000 in debt. When Ronald and Stephanie Jordan married, they didn't think twice about living beyond their means. I like to shop, I like nice things. <laughs> you know, we were just spending. Ronald worked for a premier package delivery company, and Stephanie was an administrative assistant. While they had enough to pay their rent and basic bills, they used credit cards for everything else. You know, as long as we can afford the minimum payment, we were good to go. They charged their timeshare, cars, clothes, meals out, and household items. When they maxed out one card, they got another. Ronald handled the finances and wasn't worried because the bills were always paid on time. Then a couple of years into their marriage. I was looking at credit card statements, just trying to figure out where the money was going. You start thinking about the future. You start thinking about, am I gonna be able to get a house? Am I gonna be able to retire? And if you don't have any money left over in the month, there's no way you can do those things. After a close examination of their financial situation, Ronald broke the news. The couple was $145,000 in debt. It's almost like, well, all of this can't come from just eating out or just, you know, spending or, you know, that type of things. But, I mean, it was there. I mean, he clearly, I mean, he had it all laid out. Then a coworker told Ronald about a Christian-based money management program. I found out about tithing by listening to other um, ministers and then just reading the Bible for myself. The scripture talks about money, uh, really how you treat and deal with money uh, really is how you treat and deal with everything in your life. And up until that point, nothing else had worked. So why not take a chance and try something different? As they tithe, they stuck to a strict budget, committed to paying off their debt. We cut back, I mean, to make the sacrifice for, you know, the financial freedom that we desired to have. I uh, turned in my smartphone and got a dumb phone, stopped eating out, start cooking more at home. And when our friends wanted to go out, we just said, hey, we can't can't do it right now. Soon, Ronald and Stephanie started using money as a way to help others instead of satisfying themselves. It's like the scales coming off your eyes. I wanted to give the God instead of spending myself because uh, my heart had been convicted. And like, you know, I really got to do this to honor God. Things can, can go at any point, but being generous and caring for others are things that really hit to the heart. Within seven years of putting God first in their finances, the Jordan's debt was gone. We were free. It was a great feeling, and I would not go back for anything in the world. It just opened up so many options for Stephanie and I. We've been able to uh, give more um, in addition to the tithe. Um, we sponsor uh, three children through various organizations. Along the way, Ronald and Stephanie got raises and promotions at work. Then out of the blue, Ronald was offered a new job. Since starting to tithe, his salary has more than tripled. It's no coincidence, right? You get certain areas of life in order and everything else just kind of falls in place. Today, the couple looks for opportunities to give. 
I'm a lot more empathetic and sympathetic and um, uh, my eyes are open to the needs of the kingdom and uh, only God can do that. They have their own home and recently took a dream trip to Israel. For others who want to see a turnaround in their finances, they suggest making tithing and giving a priority like they have. Examine God's word for yourself. Look up uh, scriptures and different messages on the topic and then practice it and watch God work. If you start tithing, God will definitely increase what you have. Give him his 10% and God will definitely take care of you. Here's a scripture. I hope it goes deep within you. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. How do you use well what you're given? Well, you put the kingdom of God first. Ronald and Stephanie learned that, and, and instead of having $145,000 in debt, they got rid of all of that. They stopped spending on their own pleasures and said, how can we save? How can we earn more? And most importantly, how do we give to the kingdom of God? To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. My father has put a whole chapter in this wonderful book, 10 Laws for Success, on what we call the law of use. And it's the very first chapter of this book. Later in today's show, I'm going to tell you how you can get it. But I encourage you, yes, study the scriptures. Study what God has put as laws for success. When you do, wonderful things will happen to you. Well, Christian entered the real estate business just as the bubble burst. He took a side job as a DJ to try to make ends meet. Still, his family was barely scraping by until his wife, Crystal, learned about the power of tithing. When they were young parents, Christian and Crystal Rosna never imagined they'd have a carefree afternoon boating with their kids. While expecting their third baby, Christian shifted careers into real estate sales just before the 2008 housing bubble burst. I stressed out my wife so bad during that time. What are we going to do? How are we going to make it? His commission checks dwindled to $130 for real estate. I was only a paralegal at that time. I was worried I wasn't gonna get any maternity leave. For extra income, Christian landed a side gig as an events DJ on weekends. We're barely squeaking by with mortgage, uh, utility bills, food, credit cards, and medical bills, and all those things just start to, to pile up. It was a really difficult time to have your income just kind of evaporate when you have a family to support. Like she'd done on each maternity leave, Crystal watched the 700 Club, where teaching on tithing and giving to God intrigued her. And then when I look through the Bible and I just see it everywhere. The first 10%, it's real. And so when I brought that to my husband and I was like, well, we need to tithe. I just kind of felt like, you know, it's my money, we worked for it. As Christian wrestled with fully trusting God, they occasionally gave a church. Christian struggled with that a little bit. You know, like, why are we giving to the church when we've got bills to pay? It was a long struggle. It was ongoing because church is every Sunday, right? We would just kind of 20 bucks, you know, here and there. Oh, we're giving something to God. It's, it's a little something. It wasn't the real deal. To stay afloat, they refinanced their house, extracting thousands in cash from its equity to cover expenses. Despite Christian's doubts, the couple first tithed from the cash they received, and then they paid bills. They had $3,500 left as their future savings. I did kind of want to hold back and go, Are we, am I sure like we could use this money? Okay, God, you can have it. I want you to have it. And when I let go of it and just trusted God, I felt started to feel joy about it. Like, I just felt like this re relief, like God's got this. A week later, the owner of the company where Christian DJ'd took him to lunch. She says, we want to sell the, the business and we want to sell it to you. And I thought, I can't buy a business right now. I, I don't have the money. I don't know what that would look like, what that would cost. However, the down payment for the franchise matched his bank balance. So I run out and call my wife and I say, hey, they're offering to sell us this business for exactly what we have in our bank account. She doesn't hesitate. She just says, well, you told her yes, right? 
The Rosnas put up the down payment and bought the business, while the former owners financed a loan for the remaining franchise value. Revenue flowed in immediately for Christian and Crystal, and with it an income to consistently tithe. So I'm down in the basement of our house, on the phone, calling venues, calling prospective brides, just really working the business and started to see immediate results. Our business income doubled every year for about the first five or six years. Within seven years, they paid off the loan for the franchise. As their income continued to increase, so did their tithe and giving to ministries like CBN. Terry, with all the work she does with the Orphan's Promise, it had my heart. Everything that CBN does is just for his glory and just to make lives better for people around the globe. If you give to CBN, knowing that you're helping support the Great Commission, what else is there? Like, that's, that's the number one goal of God calling us to do that. The Rosnas hope others embrace what they learned about tithing and giving and God's faithfulness. In my mind, had we not tithed, I would not be sitting where I am today in a way better financial situation than I ever could have been. What we do as a family is we give our first fruits and trust in God and He provides everything else. Never stop tithing and then just watch and watch Him take care of you. I love these stories. I love how God is blessing people for Christian and Crystal. The blessings were overtaking them. They weren't looking to acquire a business. It was given to them. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's what Crystal walked into. It's a promise in the Bible. When you observe what the Bible tells you to do, how to have success in life, well, then these wonderful things will come along and just literally overtake you. That's what happened to them. It will happen to you if you just follow the same principles. Now, we've got a book for you. It's called 10 Laws for Success, How to, you know, how to Win at Work, Family, Finance, but the biggest thing, how to have success in life and, and success on God's terms, not on the world's terms, but what God says. So it's, it's yours when, when you join the 700 Club. Now, We've got some wonderful news, and this just came in from yesterday. People are going to say, we love giving. Here from Windermere, Florida, $5,000. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 1,000 club members saying, I want to increase to 6000 And then some partners from Virginia say, we want to challenge others to give. We love giving. We love having the blessings of God overtake us. We love giving. We want to challenge others to give. So they will match your giving dollar for dollar, $75,000. Lord, we ask for blessing for the partners who made it possible to, uh, to increase, to, to issue this challenge. We make a, a special request for everyone watching right now that you would bless them that you would increase them as they listen to what your word tells them to do as they obey may blessings overtake them may increase the increase that comes from you 30 60 100 fold be real in their lives bless them now for we ask it in jesus name amen now, challenge is a $75,000 challenge. We've got 38 minutes and 21 seconds on, on the clock. That's the time to the end of the hour. And what are we asking you to do? Well, we're asking you to join the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day. You can join at higher levels. We've got 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. If you're already at those levels and you're a member of the 700 Club, I encourage you to go to 1,000 Club. That's $84 a month. We also have 2,500 Club, 2,500 a year founder, 5,000 or more a year. And then Chairman Circle, 10,000 or more a year at whatever level. Do it right now because your giving will be automatically matched dollar for dollar up to $75,000. So we need to hear from you. Call us now, 1-800-700-7000. Cynthia Lewis was living large. After college, she worked hard to build enough wealth to afford whatever she wanted to buy and to do whatever she wanted to do. A few years down the road, her lavish lifestyle vanished and Cynthia was left down and out. 
Cynthia Lewis is a mortgage industry leader with more than 15 years of experience. Following college in 2003, she quickly set her sights on the real estate industry with one goal in mind, to build wealth. I just learned that if I showed up every day and did the things that I was doing, I could make a lot of money. And in making a lot of money, I could do the things that I wanted to do or I could buy what I wanted to buy. I built this life that I never thought would come to an end. However, within a few short years, Cynthia's world came crashing down. The housing and lending crisis hit, and she was unable to support her high spending lifestyle. She had to liquidate her home and several rental properties she could no longer afford. It was like a ton of bricks literally just fell on you. I felt shame over identity being tied up in things. I felt shame over the choices I made. In 2008, Cynthia moved to Atlanta hoping for new opportunities. She got a job in the financial industry earning a quarter of what she was previously making. Battling depression and overwhelmed with shame, she turned to God. I get to a point where I'm like, God, what more do you want from me? I was on my bathroom floor and I remember crying out to God and I just felt like at that point, I, I remember hearing these voices. And I remember this voice saying, you should just take your life. Shame, frustration, not being able to rebound and, and just being stuck in this place. In that same moment, I immediately heard the voice of God say, come home. And it was at that point where I was like, Lord, I surrender. Cynthia resigned and moved back home with her parents. She started going back to church. I remember battling with, I just got to get everything back so that I can prove I haven't lost it all. I can prove that I'm still good. I can prove that I'm successful. In 2013, Cynthia joined a new firm where she found many of her coworkers were Christians. They began to pray and study the Bible together. And I'm really seeing my relationship with God personally flourish and it's getting deeper. I no longer cared about what I made. One day at a church, a guest speaker challenged her to trust God with her finances. And he was like, you know, if you believe the word of the Lord, if you trust God, sow this seed. And if you sow this seed, you'll never lack. Cynthia boldly stepped out on faith and gave her last $1,000. And I literally just got paid. So it was like, okay, Lord, you know, it's going to be another 12 or 13 days before I get paid again. And this is all I have. And that was at that moment, I stepped out on his words and I was just like, Lord, I know you'll take care of me. I know you'll supply the need. I don't even care about the excess anymore. Two days later, a stranger blessed her with $500, enough to take care of her bills until her next paycheck. Cynthia says her 10-year financial struggle was broken. Through tithing, the love of money and what money could do for me naturally broke off of me. Now I saw money as resources from God, a resource for the kingdom to further support the kingdom. Cynthia started consistently tithing and giving generously. Over the next five years, her income dramatically increased with a 35 to 45 percent gain every single year. I was a number one or top five producer every single year after that. I mean, it just it's, it's amazing the doors that God began to open. It's amazing how things begin to flourish. Everything that I felt that I lost in that season, the Lord began to restore back to me. Today, Cynthia is the owner of New Dominion Mortgage, a company set to exceed a million dollars in business revenue. Her salary has doubled from her highest earning year, which opened the door for her to buy a new home. Cynthia encourages everyone to give because God will reward your faithfulness. If you put it out there, it does come back to you. And it's not necessarily always in a dollar or a tangible amount, but he gives back to you more than you could ever, ever give to him. And that's why the, the song says you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. There's a wonderful story in the Gospel of Mark about giving, and let me set the stage for you. In, in the temple, the, the temple, Herod's temple, they had set up these collection um, containers. They, they were ceramic, and on top of the container, they had things that looked like trumpets. They were 
uh, funnels. So you drop your coin into the funnel and it would actually make a noise that would fill the courtyard. Uh, people could hear how much you were giving. So the more coins you put in and the heavier the coins, the bigger the noise. Well, here's what happened in the middle of that scene. It's Mark chapter 12. One poor widow threw in two mites. If you ever picked up a mite, you know there's no weight to it. It wouldn't have made a noise in that, in that trumpet. And he called his disciples to him and said, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. They all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. It wasn't making a sound in the temple, but it sure was making a sound in heaven. So much that Jesus gathered his disciples and said, you need to look at this. Look at what she did. In the Bible, there's tithes, there's offerings, and then there's special offerings. And Cynthia made that special offering. She gave all that she had. She said, God, if this is what you want me to do, I trust you. There's a whole lot of month left on this paycheck. It was supposed to pay all these bills. You know all of that, but you're asking me to give, so I'm giving to you, knowing that you will provide. For Cynthia, it broke the power of money over her. And some of you, you need to have that broken. Some of you are already cheerful givers. You're loving God. You're loving putting into the kingdom. But if you need it broken over you, consider the story of the widow and her two mites. Do you trust God with your future? Do you trust him with your finances? Are you willing to trust him cheerfully and generously and say, yes, God, I'm all in? We're in the middle of a $75,000 challenge. What are we asking you to do? We're asking you to join with everything CBN is doing around the world. A portion of every gift goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people very tangibly. Another portion goes into the work of CBN International to preach the gospel around the world. You're a part of all of it when you join with us. So do it now. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. Let's go to Andrew at the phones. Andrew? Thanks so much, Gordon. Family blessings, healing, financial security. The key to all three and more is in Pat Robertson's signature book, 10 Laws for Success. This legacy teaching will also answer your deepest questions about the meaning and purpose of your life. How is this world supposed to work? Is there a godly framework for success? How can I live with eternity in mind? Get answers to these questions and more in 10 Laws for Success from CBN. Featuring Pat Robertson's signature book, 10 Laws for Success, in hardcover and audio formats, plus a brand new study guide. 10 Laws for Success will give you the tools you need to live with godly purpose and power. Learn how to practice life-changing principles such as the laws of use, unity, change and responsibility discover biblical principles for achieving success both now and for eternity put the laws of god's kingdom to work in your life get 10 laws for success today call or go online now Friends, in this book are 10 keys, 10 secrets, really, in the kingdom of God to help you thrive and achieve. Even if you're familiar with Scripture already and have a good foundation of the Word of God, I assure you, you will find new wisdom in Pat's revelations here in 10 Laws for Success. 10 laws, not just one, not five, but 10. Great kingdom principles in here. A copy of this is yours when you join the 700 Club. Just call 1-800-700-7000. If you join, you'll also receive a great study guide, Practicing the Ten Laws of Success. You can read the hardcover book and do the study guide as well. You'll also get instant audio streaming of the book. Perhaps you like to read a book that way, just by the audio. We'll send you that as well. If you join us at the 700 Club Gold level, that's $40 a month or more, we'll send you three copies of the book, three copies of the study guide. Perhaps this is the day you go from 700 Club to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. Some of you can join at a higher level, perhaps the 1000 
Citizen Club or higher, and you'll receive five copies of 10 Laws for Success, five copies of the study guide as well. However you wish to join, thank you. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Go to CBN.com or text CBN to 71777. Terry, back to you. Thanks, Andrew. Well, one of the things that happens when you join the 700 Club is that you have the opportunity to help people receive life-saving surgeries all over the world. Like this child from India named Nirne, a gland swelling under his tongue threatened to suffocate him. Here's how you came to his rescue. Nirne faced a daily struggle just to stay alive. A large gland under his tongue left him unable to speak, eat, or even breathe properly. It seems to get larger with each passing day. For the whole first two years of his life, we could only give him milk. Nirne's parents tried to give him semi-solid food through the small opening at the top of his mouth, but that came with the risk of choking and even infection. Now his teeth are growing and it hurts him so badly. I have saved a little bit of money, but it isn't nearly enough to pay for surgery to help him. When the family heard about Operation Blessing, they reached out to us. Thanks to the support of our partners, Operation Blessing sponsored Nirnay's surgery. We express our heartfelt gratitude to everyone who brought hope and happiness into our lives. This surgery changed our son's life. We didn't have to spend a single penny and now he eats really well. He started calling me Papa, and that is such a great gift. He looks handsome. We are so thankful to all of you for saving our son's life. The you that they are thanking is you, 700 Club members. You made that possible. You know, Nurnay's life was truly threatened, but also his parents thought he was going to die, and then you brought the hope into the midst of that situation and you bless them. We say thank you. You know, it's such an opportunity. It's not something we have to do. It's something we get to do, to be a part of what God is calling us to around the world. Don't miss out on that. If you're not a 700 Club member, this is a great time to join because when we're in the middle of a challenge like this, everything you give is doubled up to $75,000. So let me show you your options. Maybe you already are a 700 Club member. Let's take a look at general membership that's $20 a month, or you might want to go up to 700 Club Gold, $40 a month. Lots of people joining our 1,000 Club at $84 a month, and then we have a 2,500 Club level at $209 a month. Founders join us at $5,000 a year. That works out to $417 a month. Ask God what he'd have you to do, and then pick up your phone and call so that children like Nurne can have the gift of life. We thank you in advance. Gordon? Well, when you give to CBN, you help people right here in the USA. Like a single mother of four from West Virginia who was struggling to feed her family. Thanks to you, she and her children no longer have to worry about going hungry. I was the stay-at-home mom. My husband was the sole provider. I never saw myself being the, the one to get divorced. Things were really, really, really hitting rock bottom. I couldn't fix it. I couldn't fix it on my own. In the wake of her painful divorce, Kayla took on the roles of both caregiver and breadwinner. I went into panic mode and I was stressing because my kids were in school. How am I gonna find a job that provides the hours that I need where I can be home for my kids? That's when the doors opened for Kayla to take a job cooking at a church daycare center. It just fell into place and they, it was a daycare so they provided childcare for my youngest as well. It was a reminder that God is providing because who else could give you exactly what you're needing like that with the hours and everything and all the things I was stressing and worrying about. The church daycare is next door to Operation Compassion, a partner of Operation Blessing. I said, yeah, I could probably benefit from that because if they can help me save on groceries, that would help me provide in other areas at home. The food Kayla and her family received provided the relief she needed. I feel like I'm accomplishing something, knowing that I'm providing for them, that they're getting what they need. As a mother, that's what you want for your kids. You never want to see them do without or struggle or hurt, anything like that. So, so to see them smile and happy, that made me feel like, okay, this is okay. <laughs> Kayla now works at a community action center, which provides even more support and stability for her family. On the path to becoming a teacher, 
Kayla is immensely grateful for the help she received along the way. In the midst of everything falling apart, the Lord still showed up. In His own time and in His own way, I feel hope now. Thanks to you, Kayla received the help she needed during one of the most difficult times of her life. I felt like I wasn't alone anymore. I had people fighting for me. There was someone that cared. Thank you. You were fighting for Kayla. You were fighting for her children. You were fighting for her future because you cared enough to give to say, yes, I want to be there for people in their time of need. You're part of all of it when you join the 700 Club, whether it's providing food for people right here in America, disaster relief for people here in America and around the world, livelihood programs, special surgeries, water wells. You're part of helping orphans. You're a part of preaching the gospel around the world. You're a part of bringing the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. You're a part of helping military families, active duty military families right here in the United States. It's all made possible because you care enough to give. If that's you, call us right now, 1-800-700-7000. We're in the middle of a $75,000 challenge, and we need to hear from you. So call us, 1-800-700-7000. Andrew, over to you. Thank you, Gordon. Back in the 1970s, Pat Robertson prayed a simple prayer. God, please show me how the world works and how it's supposed to work. The answer to that prayer is in Pat's signature book, 10 Laws for Success, and it can be yours when you join the 700 Club. Embark on a journey to peace and fulfillment. Find hope in Christ alone as you realize the life-transforming wisdom in Pat Robertson's legacy teaching, 10 Laws for Success. Achieve purpose and fulfillment by exploring guiding principles shaping your path. Learn to lead a successful, meaningful life and bring blessings and unity to your family. In this latest offering from CBN, you'll receive the hardback copy of Pat's signature book, 10 Laws for Success. The 10 Laws for Success study guide, plus instant audio streaming to the 10 Laws for Success book. Join us today as a thank you for becoming a CBN partner. You'll receive 10 Laws for Success. Don't miss this chance to enrich your journey and unleash your potential. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com today. Friends, this book is a life changer. Stop just guessing what God may want you to be. Understand God wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give you discernment. He wants you to understand his plan for your life. And the 10 Laws for Success is a great way to walk in that, to walk in the flow of God's blessing. The 10 Laws for, your, for Success is yours when you join the 700 Club. You'll get the hardcover book and the study guide and instant audio streaming. If you join us at the 700 Club Gold level, you can give two copies of, away and keep one for yourself. Just give us a call, 1-800-700. 7, go to cbn.com or text CBN to 71777 and just say, I want to join the 700 Club and 10 Laws for Success will be yours. Gordon, over to you. Lucy Santana is a go-getter. She once worked on Wall Street and later she ran the button business for New York. Well, today helping the poor is her priority along with saving souls. And Lucy is able to do all this and more without ever leaving her living room. CBN partner Lucy Santana says her favorite time of the day is when she watches The 700 Club. I love everything about the show. When I see the testimonies that come on with what God does for people, it's, it's just incredible. Only God could do something like that. A former New Yorker, Lucy worked in accounting for a Wall Street investment bank before buying a retail button store in Brooklyn. I was the button store for New York. You name the size, the colors, the width, whatever, I had it. When her husband passed, she sold the business and moved out of the city. Always a go-getter, she kept working. Post-pandemic, she took a new job offer in accounting just five minutes from her house that was too good to pass up. Even with new work hours, Lucy loves that she can continue to watch the 700 Club anytime on demand. At night, I could watch it on YouTube, or if I don't want to put the TV on, I'll um, go to CBN.com. I will watch it on my phone. So it's, it's awesome that, it, that they make it available in the different ways. 
Lucy says helping the poor is one of the reasons she became a partner. All the uh, child surgeries that they do, all the surgeries that they do for these children, I don't think it would happen without CBN. Without people giving and contributing to uh, all these things, the uh, water systems that they, uh, that they do for the community. And that, for that, it's not just one person. That's a community that gets it. It improves their life, it improves their health, it improves everything. And then they are so grateful. You see how grateful they are. And here we provided it because of our giving, because the Lord moves our heart to do that. These are all the reasons why I give to CBN. Among the countless shows she's watched through the years, one telethon stands out in particular. Pat Robinson was asking people to join. It moved my heart when I saw his passion. I mean, it was visible, his passion for people to give to the poor and how he likes to help out. And I said, wow, I am part of that, but Lord, have you used me to have anybody come to heaven? I said, Lord, I, I'm, I consider myself an authentic Christian. I go to church, I read my word, I tithe. I give to the 700 Club, and I was really concerned about souls being one, you know, how the, if the Lord used me for souls to, uh, to get to heaven. She thought about that question for a week. During her regular routine of writing out her church tithe check, Lucy got her answer. And all of a sudden, I heard very clearly, the Lord let me know, you are saving souls. I'm, I'm using you to uh, save souls through your giving, and I knew what he was talking about. I knew that it was my giving, uh, my tithings, my giving to uh, CBN, to uh, the 700 Club. I was so blessed to hear that. That's why it's so important to give when you hear someone asking. Don't be hesitant to give because you are winning souls as well. Lucy recently increased her pledge from $40 a month to $50 a month. She encourages everyone to give and join in CBN's life-changing outreaches. When I give, I, I think of that scripture that says what you have done for these little ones you have done unto me, you clothed me, uh, you, you gave me water, you know, you, so we, we're doing it unto him. And then here we are, we're winning souls for him. You can be a part of winning souls for him. You can be a part of preaching the gospel around the world. Hal, join the 700 Club. A portion of every gift you give goes into preaching the gospel around the world. I've got some great news. Partners from California want to add to the challenge, and then partners from Maryland want to get part of it, and then Virginia wants to join in. They're all adding $60,000 to this challenge. It takes us all the way up to $135,000, and let's pray. Lord, for the partners who made it possible to increase this challenge, I just ask that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing they cannot contain. And for those watching, making decisions right now, speak to them. Let them know how much you want the gospel to go to every tribe, every nation, every tongue. You want to see that happen. So, Lord, let them know that they can be part of your plan. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You heard it, 135,000. We've got 12 minutes and 22 seconds left on that clock. We need to hear from you. So call us right now, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? I want you to meet Kevin. He's a young boy who was abandoned by his mother, just left down the streets to fend for himself. His situation was so dire, he actually thought of looking for a rope and hanging himself. Instead, he was given food, shelter, and love, all because of you. Kevin was born at his grandmother's house. After his mother gave birth to him, she abandoned him, leaving him in the care of his grandmother. When I was small, life at home with my grandmother was very good. I love her very much. I woke up, went to school, and then came back home. Granny gave me chores to do with her, and when I was done, she let me play. A few years later, Kevin's mother came back, planning to take him with her to Nairobi. Kevin's grandmother didn't want him to leave, but she had no choice but to let him go. Instead of taking him to Nairobi with her, his mother abandoned him again, this time with an aunt in the nearby town of Kitale. I did not like being there or being away from home. My aunt would not give me food. She sent me to bed hungry while they ate. She was angry at my mom for not sending her money to support me. I spent one whole year there. Then she chased me away and threw my bag out of the house. 
That night, I just sat by the road. I could not go to sleep because I had to guard my bag from street boys who wanted to steal from me. I did not know how to get back to my grandmother and I felt like I had nothing to live for. I thought of looking for a rope and hanging myself. The next day, someone found him on the streets of Katale and brought him to Embrace, a ministry supported in part by CBN's Orphan's Promise. Here, he was given food, counseling, and a safe shelter. Here, he could heal from his trauma while social workers searched for his grandmother. Everyone welcomed me here at Embrace. We did many different activities and always had fun together. One of the things I learned to do is pray, and now I pray every day. I was taught about God and the Bible, and I gave my life to Jesus. It felt so good, and immediately, my life became different. Just a few months after he arrived at Embrace, Kevin was reunited with his grandmother. I was so happy to get back home with my granny. It was a very happy day. My grandmother said she prayed every day that God would bring me back to her. I really missed her and she missed me. I am back in my old school now. I am working hard to catch up. I am very grateful to everyone who helped me. I have come a long way to be here today and I never want to go back. If it weren't for you, I would not be here. Now I have a hope for a good future. I pray God will bless you all and that you continue helping rescue boys from the streets and teaching them about Jesus. This beautiful child, you, you can't imagine that twice abandoned. And yet today, because of your love and your provision, Kevin is, is well. He's whole physically, but he's also whole spiritually. He's just one example of the lives that you're touching because of your generosity. We say thank you. When you call and give right now to help us meet, meet this challenge that we're in, would you do it using Pledge Express? You just say you want to do that when you call. It means it's electronic monthly giving, save you all the work, saves us some additional funds so we can put even more into the lives of children like Kevin. Make a difference. Make a difference. It's our opportunity. Gordon? All right, let's check in on the red number on this $135,000 challenge. We've got 46000 to go with just eight minutes. 45, it's coming down. It's going to come down again. West Haven, Connecticut. Founder saying you can count on me. Five thousand dollars. That takes us down to forty thousand. We're inside of victory. Be a part of it. Call us now. One eight hundred seven hundred seven thousand. Well, when her daughter was born with a cleft palate, Nini was to was told her baby would die, and that's when she vowed to do everything in her power to keep her child alive, and she did. But it wasn't enough. The baby needed surgery that Nini and her husband could never afford. Mayo was born with a cleft palate. Sometimes when her mom Nini looked at her daughter, she remembered what the midwife said the day that Mayo was born. She said, my daughter would not survive. I promised myself that I would do everything I could to save her life. The doctor said she could have surgery when she turned one. So my husband and I decided to save up for the operation. Dan and Nini work in the rice fields in Myanmar. Nini also weaves mats to sell, but they earn just enough for the basics. I thought about working as a maid in the city. I couldn't bear the thought of leaving her. Mayo's big sister, Kayang, helps out when she can. It breaks my heart to see her cry. I play with her so she stops crying. Then one day, Nini heard about Operation Blessing. We then paid for Mayo to receive free surgery to repair her cleft palate. When she came out of surgery, I was really happy to see her. And Kayang was excited to see Mayo when she came home from the hospital. My sister's lip is so beautiful now. My heart is filled with happiness. Now, she is able to eat well. She likes looking at herself in the mirror and loves being with her friends. I never thought this day would come, but you make my dreams come true. Thank you. 
You made my dreams come true. You provided when I needed help. That's you. When you're a member of the 700 Club, that's you. I invite you to join us. If you're not a member, call 1-800-700-7000. If you're already a member, consider increasing. Going to 700 Club Gold, $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year. We've got 2,500 Club, which is 2,500 a year. Founders, $5,000 or more a year. And then Chairman Circle, $10,000 or more a year. At whatever level, God is speaking to you. We've got $21,000, $20,000. It's coming down. Five minutes left on a $135,000 challenge. Your gift will automatically be matched dollar for dollar up to 135,000. So call us right now, 1-800-700-7000. Andrew, over to you. Thank you. We've been telling you all about Pat Robertson's book, 10 Laws for Success, and now we want to show you some of the benefits available to you and your family through this powerful teaching. Get 10 Laws for Success and discover the overriding principles that govern our world to help you thrive in your work, family, and finances. When you become a CBN partner, you'll receive a copy of Pat Robertson's signature book, 10 Laws for Success, instant audio streaming access, and the all-new study guide, Practicing the 10 Laws for Success. Call now or go to CBN.com. 10 Laws for Success will help you personally grow. It's going to help your family. It could help you professionally. I urge you to get a copy of 10 Laws for Success. If you've been watching the 700 Club for quite some time and are not a member, today's a great day to join the 700 Club. Just give us a call at 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com or text CBN to 71777. Or I encourage you to join us at the 700 Club Gold Level. That's $40 a month. And when you do so, we'll send you three copies of Pat's book, 10 Laws for success, three study guides, and again, you'll get instant audio streaming. Give us a call. Terry, over to you. Well, year after year, Alexa didn't grow. She didn't gain weight. Her heart was always beating too fast, and she was always tired. Then one day, the doctor said she urgently needed surgery or she would die. For most parents, a child's birthday is filled with hope for the future, but not for Alexa. She'd been born with a hole in her heart. She went to the cardiologist every year around her birthday. At first, they said the hole could close on its own with treatment. So I spent years going to the doctor, worrying about what he would say. And every time he said the hole had gotten bigger. And every year, Alexa's health got worse. She did not improve. She did not grow or gain weight despite what we fed her. And even with the heart medicine, her heart was always beating too fast, and she was tired all the time. Meanwhile, Alexa's condition was taking a toll on the whole family, including her dad, Carlos. The doctor said if Alexa was not operated on, she would possibly die. I didn't want to hear that news. Both Jacqueline and Carlos worked hard to save for their daughter's surgery. Carlos knew there would never be enough. It's impossible with the salaries we have. Even if we join my brother's salary or the whole family income, there will never be enough to pay for this surgery without help. Then they received the news they'd been praying for. Operation Blessing paid for Alexa to receive open heart surgery at the only heart hospital in El Salvador. It was very emotional for us because we saw that this was a miracle for our daughter. Alexa soon returned home, and according to her mom, she's been healthy ever since. It has changed her life. Now, she goes to school like a normal girl. She plays, and her heart is normal. I will be forever grateful to the people who made this surgery possible. We thank God and Operation Blessing for helping us. And that, my friends, is you. You know, in many parts of the world, there is never enough. But when we bring in the love of God and the generosity of your hearts, we bring in more than enough. And people's lives are forever changed. We want to say thank you. Listen, will you go to your phone right now? Because we're coming up on the end of the hour. We need to meet this challenge. We need you. It's 1-800-700-7000. Gordon? Well, clean drinking water, most of us take it for granted, yet in many parts of the world, drinking water can make you really sick. 
Eight-year-old Claudia lives with her parents in El Mirador, a remote community in Mexico. Their greatest challenge has been finding and transporting the water they need for drinking, bathing, and cooking. Ever since I was five, my parents asked me to fetch water. Even though it's a small bottle, I know every little bit helps. The path to the water source is steep and long. It can be especially challenging during a rainy season. Sometimes the rocks are slippery and that is the hardest part. One time there was a big rock that was very pointy. I fell and the water came out. Dara is the children's mom. She said it's not only hard collecting water, but that the water is not safe for them to drink. It has been a daily reality that our kids get sick when they drink bad water. Then Operation Blessing came to their community and set up a rainwater harvesting system. Now they can collect up to 1,300 gallons of water, which is then purified and safe to drink. It's great, we can take showers and there is plenty of water for us to use. We feel safe drinking water because we know it's clean. Thank you, Operation Blessing, for giving us clean water. We're going way over the top on this challenge. 2,500 from Tennessee, from Missouri, 2,500. Pink Hill, North Carolina, 6,000. Alabama, 2,500. Seaford, Virginia, 3,000. We had 135,000. Against that, you gave 164. Hallelujah. We'll see you again tomorrow.